Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unisor Education. Um, we continue talking about theory of probabilities. Today's topic is random variables. That's introduction to random variables. Um, I do suggest you to um, study this material um, watching this lecture on unisor.com because the lectures over there uh, are presented with notes and also registered students can take exams and uh, uh, just do some self-study, especially if it's uh, about the problem-solving lectures. Before um, going into any problem-solving uh, lecture, watching this lecture, it would be very uh, beneficial if you will just try to uh, solve these problems yourself. I mean, that's the, pur that's the purpose of the entire course, actually, to teach you to solve problems. All right, now, this is a more theoretical material, it's not anything related to problems, I have to introduce a new concept, the concept of random variable, that's what it is. Okay, uh, theory of probabilities, um, historically, was developed based on basically the games, the gambling, if you wish. Um, people wanted to analyze the chances of having this or that particular game won or lost. Um, now, um, obviously, with uh, each game, there was some kind of a monetary uh, financial arrangement, so people were winning or losing money. So there is certain quantitative characteristic of the game, amount you are winning or amount you are losing. So that's, the, that's where the roots of the random variables actually um, uh, are. So, not only we want to evaluate all the different results of our random experiments, all the different elementary events, but we also want to have certain quantitative characteristic of each event. All right, now, let me give you uh, an example. Um, you are flipping a coin. Not only you are interested in uh, whether it actually shows the heads or the tails and whether you can guess it um, in, in this way or that, you probably bet money on it. So let's consider you bet one dollar on heads. You are playing with your partner. So the partner flips the coin and if it falls showing the heads, then you win and he pays you a dollar. If it's tails, you lose and you're paying him a dollar. Well, that seems to be a fair game, right? So what is a dollar? Dollar is a quantitative uh, measurement of the event. So what's our sample uh, space? Sample space contains two different uh, uh, elementary events, heads and tails. So this is my Omega. This is my sample space. It has two elementary events. Now, what are the probabilities of these events? Well, the probabilities are P of heads equals one half and P of tails equals one half. And obviously the sum of these is equal to one because that's the total probability of anything happening. Now, I, I associate with these two different elementary events two different numbers. One number is 1 with heads and another number is minus 1 with tails. This is my winning $1, this is my losing $1. So basically the game when I am betting on the heads can be described in these terms. Now, what are these? Well, this is actually an example of a random variable. A random variable is basically a, a function, if you wish, which is defined on these two elementary events and, takes in, uh, and taking values in correspondingly two different um, uh, numerical values, real values. So usually a random, random function, random variable is introduced in exactly this fashion you have to have certain uh, uh, sample space with elementary events 
and for each elementary event you have certain numerical characteristic of this. Um, not necessarily, by the way, different. Sometimes they might be similar, the same, or whatever. So, this basically has this property of being a quantitative characteristic of the winning or losing. So, these are elementary events, these are the probabilities of these events, and these are random values of different values of random variable which is defined on this set of uh, elementary events. So again, you can actually think about random variable as a function which has certain domain where it's defined and it has certain values. So where it's defined is the set of elementary events and the set of values are real numbers. Okay. Uh, next. Next, let me give you a couple of examples. Okay. A couple of examples of random variables. Very simple examples. The sample first is you have a certain uh, number, let's say 10 people in the room. A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, let's have six. I don't want to have 10, too many. All right. Now, uh, the random experiment is picking a simple, uh, one simple pick, simple uh, pick of one person, right? So you're picking one person from the room. So each person has certain age, right? Let's say this has 23, this has 20, this has 22, this has 20, this has 30, and this is 55. So if I am selecting a particular person out of this set and this person has certain age so the age is basically a result of the a numerical result of the random experiment of selecting the person so if I am selecting with equal chances then each one of these has one six probability well, there are six of them, right? So there are, the probability associated with each elementary event is one six. So my random variable takes values 23, 20, 20, 20, 30, and 55 with probabilities correspondingly one six, one six, one six, one six, one six, and one six. Now, what's interesting, by the way, that two different values, <coughs> they're not really different, right? So, if I'm asking what's the probability of my random variable to take the value 20, well, that's 1, 6 and 1, 6. So it's actually 2, 6, which is 1 third. So the probability of taking the value 20 is greater than the probability of taking 23 or 22 or 30 or 55. All right, in any case, this is an example of a random variable where the set where it's defined, the elementary events, is a set of six people and the value of the random variable is the age of randomly selected person. Next example. Next example is the game of roulette. Now, um, the game of roulette um, and there are certain variations uh, in, in America the game of roulette has numbers from one to 36 and then zero and double zero so it's 38 different position on the wheel and the ball is actually spinning and the wheel is spinning and wherever the ball stops that's the number um, now there are also some other aspects of this game like the color of the number etc but let's just completely forget about all this we are talking about the game when you have to uh, guess a number so let's say you are predicting that the number will be 23. Now, the, the game as it is played actually in the casino, if you are playing on a particular number, then casino pays you on each dollar which you put, $36 if you win, and win, and you are losing a dollar, your bet, if you, look, if, if you if that, that's what you lose if you don't really uh, guess correctly. Well, considering there are 
38 different positions of the ball, only one of them is uh, uh, is the winning position, and each of them probably is equal chances if if the, if the casino is playing a fair game. So the probability of each position is uh, one thirty eight, right? So the, the the probability of your winning is one thirty eight, right? So with the probability of one thirty eight, you get thirty six dollars. And the probability of 37, 38, so all other cases, uh, you losing a dollar. Well, which is, seems to be relatively fair. Obviously, there is something which Casino is, is, is winning, but we will talk about this later. But in a large probabilities, you lose a small amount of money, and with a small probability, you win a lot of money. So that's basically how it works. But in any case, I wanted to present this case as an example of a random variable which takes two values, 36 and minus 1. One is the probability of 138 and another is with the probability of 37.38. Now, the elementary events where this function actually is defined is all these numbers. So, omega is 1 to 36, 0 and double 0 and the probability of each is equal to 1 over 38. So these are, these are elementary events, and only on one of these events, the 23, which I am predicting, I am winning my $36. And in all other cases, I am losing my dollar. So that's how the, how the function is defined on this set of values. All of these, except 23, are associated with the number minus 1, and the 23 is associated with the number 36. That's my numerical uh, function. That's my quantitative um, equivalent of this whole uh, random experiment. All right, and I have the third example. The third example is the following. Let's say um, you have a nuclear reactor and uh, the engineer actually is measuring the temperature. The temperature should always be watched because if it's rising then we have to uh, pull the, the, the fuel uh, rod from the, from the reactor to cool it down. And if it's too cool then it should be pushed back. So basically the temperature is a very important characteristic. So um, at certain time, like every hour or something like this, an engineer is measuring temperature and he knows that the normal temperature is supposed to be, let's say, 800 degree Celsius or whatever, I don't know what it is. But its actual reading of the temperature are different, obviously, because sometimes he has 790, sometimes he has 802, sometimes he has 810, etc. So, Basically, all these experiments which he, which he is making, one after another after another, give you certain uh, event, certain elementary event, and let's say you're observing the whole thing for 24 hours. So, your set of 24 different temperature measurements are the values of your random variable. So, the, the, the time when you make this management Me measurement uh, can be your, uh, let's say you have uh, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, etc., up to 23 o'clock in military time. So every time, no, that's actually zero supposed to be. If it's military, it's zero, right? So from zero to 23. So, these 24 different elementary events correspond to 24 different temperatures. And that's basically your um, set of elementary events and numerical equivalent of your experiment. That's the random variable. So, you might say, observing uh, your uh, random variable during certain period of time, like in this case 24 hours, 
you can say that, okay, it takes certain values with certain probabilities, and you can actually observe that something around 800 is occurring more often than further from the 800, which means the reactor is working normally. So just an example, and that's, uh, in this particular case, it might be related actually with certain fluctua fluctuations within the nuclear reactor, whatever, whatever the nuclear uh, reaction is actually occurring. Okay, so examples, fine. Now, let me point out that we, in this particular course, we are talking about theory of probabilities um, which is related to finite uh, number of elementary events. So, whatever the experiment is, we have certain finite number of elementary events, and for each of these elementary events, we have the function defined as a random variable on it, right? So, let's consider it this way. You have elementary events, E1, E2, etc., En. Now, not necessarily they, uh, they have equal chances of occurring. Sometimes it has, uh, uh, they have equal, sometimes not. But so, let, let's consider a general case. So, the probability of event EI, where I is just an index from 1 to N, is equal to, let's say, it's PI. So, you have probabilities of this thing. Now, the um, uh, random uh, variable, as I was saying, is basically a function. Well, in, uh, I used to use the Greek letter C for uh, a function. And um, so the function of E1, let's say, would be value <coughs> x1 uh, for E2, it would be x2, etc. And for En, it would be xn. So these are values which my random variable takes on each of these elementary events. Now, um, what's important actually to understand that to analyze how the random variable um, acts, it's not really necessary to go to the elementary events. What is necessary is to go to the probabilities of these elementary events because uh, sometimes two different elementary events can lead to the same value of the function. Like you saw it on, uh, uh, with example, with roulette, for instance. Everything except number 23 had a um, value of the random variable equals to minus 1, right? So, and only 23 had 36. So, what makes sense is to analyze the probabilities of the random variable um, to take certain values. So what I can say right now is that the probability of random uh, variable um, C equals to X1 is equal to P1, to, 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 pi, to, to, to pi 1, to P1, that's not pi, P. The probability of random variable uh, C to equal to x2 is equal to uh, p2. And the probability of random variable uh, c to equal to any xi is actually pi. So that's what's important. This is basically, um, they're saying it, it's a distribution of the random variable among different values. That's what it's describing here. So this value with this probability, that should be R, R1, again. This value with this probability, etc. So that's, that's basically enough to analyze the behavior of the random variable. The probabilities of having this random variable to take certain values. So we need to know the values, and we need to know the probabilities of these values, and that's enough to analyze our um, random variable. So in 
these terms, if you go back to our game of roulette, you can say that the probability of C equals to uh, 36 equals to uh, 138 when you are guessing one number out of 36 numbers 0 and double zero and the probability of C equals to minus 1 equals to 37, 38. So our variable, random variable C, takes only two values, 36 and minus 1, with these probabilities. And that's basically a sufficient description of the random variable, because after that we can do something like an average, dispersion, etc., etc., all the different properties, which will be addressed later in a different lecture. So right now I'm just introducing you to the concept of what is random variable. So on one hand, that's a function defined on a set of elementary events. For each elementary event, there is some kind of a numerical value. But if you will abstract out the fact that these are elementary events and just concentrate on the probabilities, because the probabilities is what's, what's, what's important actually. Yes, you can d describe this function in a different manner. Uh, C of 1 is equal to minus 1. C of 2 is equal to minus 1, etc. C of 22 is equal to minus 1. C of 23 is equal to 36. And C of 24 is equal to again minus 1, etc. C of 0 is equal to minus 1. And C of 0, 0 is equal to that. So this is also a description. But this is not basically as interesting and as short, actually, as this one, because to analyze the function C, you really don't need this. What's sufficient is to have just these two. Okay, it takes two values. All these are uh, minus 1, and there are 37 of them. That's why it's 37, 38. And this one is only one single value, and that's why it's 36, with a 1, 30, 1 over 38 probability. All right, so that's my introduction to uh, the concept of a random variable. Obviously, the random variables are much more uh, studied and analyzed than the pure elementary events per se, because what's interesting about elementary events, only their probability, whether it happens or it doesn't happen with certain probability. Uh, with random variables, we can do numerical manipulation. We can add them. We can multiply them. I mean, there are many different things which we can do with random variables. And, um, and, and that's actually where the theory of probabilities go, go, goes into really depths, really very deep uh, analysis. And that's where we can learn something about events. We can learn about averaging, uh, about uh, dispersion, standard deviation, and, and stuff, stuff like this. But that's in future lectures, all right? So that's just an introduction. Thanks very much for listening to me. Maybe it makes sense, actually, to read again on unizor.com notes to this lecture. They contain basically the same material, but maybe slightly differently uh, presented. And it's always good to, to repeat whatever, whatever you have learned here from the lecture. Thanks a lot, and good luck.